where were your nerves when we started? Like, scale oh. of one to ten. Mm, like a solid seven and a half. Where is that now? Like a three. Progress. <laughs> we move. Right, right. Progress. Okay. <laughs> Ultimately. So, where do you want to start? I always find it's good, like, if the main person asks me questions first. You want me to ask you questions? Yeah, ask me questions, and then we'll, we'll segue into what? me asking you questions, because I got all the questions for you. I'm trying to figure out what questions I have, though. Okay, so can it be a question like, what was the goal of this conversation? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Um... Damn, it's coming down. It is. It really Shit. is. You, I know you can't see it's dark out there. Yeah. So, um, the big thing, like, as you know, like, relations between black men and black women is fucked up right now. Mm -hmm. And enough of this doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that, from my vantage point as a black man, I don't think enough of us are good enough communicators. And on the Thank flip you. side, like okay. I said before, All I don't right. think enough of y'all <laughs> are good enough listeners. Wow. So, I mean, we're using like the conversation we had on Instagram to like push the convert, like the bigger conversation, but like the bigger right. conversation is like, why can't we get along? Why can't we find each other? So I'm gonna throw that back to you. I think that stems, honestly, man, it's a lot of things, but one of the main things I think is expectations and, um, this one is a shit. Yeah, it's really good. What were we talking, what were we talking about a second ago? Uh, just like expectations. Oh, when I was in the bathroom? No, uh-uh, not expect, so expectations and standards. Standards, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like that, that goes hand in hand to me. I don't know, I feel like, so from, like, like I was telling you, I have a niece. Mm. Little girl watches, you know, Disney movies. Mm. From a young age, we're taught to want to be princesses to a prince. You know, that we're taught to seek and that true love, you know, exists. So we're from, you know, before we can even really think for ourselves, we have this image of love that's put in front of us and it's set as the goal. Mm. And so I feel like in some ways that does prime women. And then, I mean, when you get out into society too, you know, to, to a large degree, women are expected to um, desire relationships and desire a man mm. for, you know, to just get straight to the point. So men don't have that same pressure. priming. Yeah. yeah. Or pressure. Mm. It's not there. So that's how it's, 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 it's thrown off from, from jump. Let so me. why, why do you think that pressure's on y'all, but not on us? Like, what, what's the reason? Hmm. Cardi B voice. <laughs> <laughs> probably, pro probably uh patriarchy. Mm. I know. Didn't you say you don't like that term or patriarchy? Or what was I, it? I think it's a. I think it's a coverall term. I think it's a way people deflect from okay. actually getting to the point. Okay. So, I mean, for a long time in our history of society, mm. women were seen as property, right? Mm. Um, a woman couldn't really do anything without a man. Mm -hmm. So for a while, you know, your ability to even do anything was tied to a man. Mm -hmm. You know, you weren't even seen as really a member of society unless you were Mrs. Somebody, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So that was literally the identity of women. Now, mm -hmm. I think we're pulling away from that and it's causing a bit of upheaval for people who want to keep a traditional view, so to speak, of mm -hmm. what womanhood is and all those things. And I don't want to get too far off the topic, but. Um, no, that is the topic. Yeah. Take your time. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like women have, we are consistently trying, people consistently try to put us into a box of what mm. it is to be a woman and mm. what it is to, you know, what we can and can't do and what we should and shouldn't do. And um, it's a lot of, a lot of that comes from a male dominated society. Mm. And that's why I say patriarchy. 
So. You ready for me to push back? Oh gosh, not really. Not really. No, no, no. <laughs> Let me sip. Oh gosh. So, ah. no, nah, it's not. It's not a pushback. It's more so like, um, I always, I always start things like with biology. Okay. I think biology is the foundation, or a lot of our biological programming are also like the building blocks of our societal programming. So I think the reason why women are pressured to seek companionship and a man and the whole nine is because our ultimate why are we here as humans is mm -hmm. to procreate. Okay, I see where you're going. Unfortunately, women have a smaller window than men. Based on what society and biology values in women and men. Mm -hmm. So biology values men that are strong and can hunt and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Back in the day and now, it's about your ability to earn an income and your ability to um, lead and things like that. And as we get older, gain experiences, mm -hmm. those things increase. Okay. Biology values women by their ability to procreate on a foundational level. Okay. As women get older, those things decrease. Valid. So I think, you know, the reason why, you know, most girls are going to hear you need to get married before you're 30, before you're 40, is because that, what is it called, sexual marketplace value. Mm-hmm based on biology and then based on society, mm -hmm. has highlighted that as, okay, the roller coaster is starting to go down. Mm -hmm. Now, I think what's happening now is like, we're restructuring society mm -hmm. to cater to a different definition of gender roles and a different definition of like, each of our responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, as a species, we haven't advanced that much since caveman times. Like, brain-wise, we're relatively the same as cavemen. Really? You think so? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Psychologists say it, too. We, we, the reason why, for instance, um, there's this surge in anxiety is because... It's not because our ancestors didn't have anxiety, mm -hmm. but it's because they were able to compartmentalize their anxiety. The anxiety is that jungle over there and okay. there's a line in that jungle that might fuck me up okay there are no jungles anymore so the line is everywhere and that's because okay. our brains haven't caught up <laughs> to the current realities you know okay. so that's what I, that's what i think it is i think it all starts with biology and we're trying to push back at it but like <sighs> Okay, but by and large, though, mm -hmm. we do have technologies that far exceed the the strict biological time frames. Meaning, you, a woman can freeze her eggs. Sure, she can have kids without a man. Sure. So there are so many other options and avenues to the the common objective, or what you say was, you know, the I guess the determining factor of mm -hmm. women's. Was mm -hmm. it? But see, those things are still like alternatives. So you're saying people want to be old school about it? Everybody wants to be old school. I mean, I, I guess it's seen as the, the outlier. Mm -hmm. You only do that if you can't do it the old school mm -hmm. way. And you know, the funny thing is like... But the I, options still exist though. The options exist. I, I always had this like nagging... I don't know if you call it an anxiety or like a... Uh, uncertainty or insecurity that I might not be able to have kids. No physical reason, <laughs> right. no like biological reason. I'm good right, health wise. Right, right. I mean, I know I can now, right, right. <laughs> but like it, 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 I always knew for me, if it never happened, I would have felt like a failure in life. Mm. So even though it happened for me under less than ideal circumstances, it's still better than like being a rich 60 year old and not having any kids. So like I, like, like I said, biology is still biology. 
And like, we're not that much far removed from our ancestors. Okay. We're not, even with the technology. I mean, I, I would have to agree with you there. Mm -hmm. Like, it is an alternative, and it's mm -hmm. only if you can't do it the natural mm -hmm. way. Uh, well, I won't say only, because mm -hmm. some people, you know, are naturally um, curious and, you know, open to things like that. Mm -hmm. But I would say status quo-wise, you know, regular and old school is the mm -hmm. preference. Yeah, old school is the best way. You, you're right. Okay, yeah. okay. I so let that. me let me throw a question at you, like... <clears throat> With, because what, what we were talking about was like certain men being intimidated by you. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like, you know, the advancements we've made in society as far as women can vote, women can own property, women can achieve and black women are killing it. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like that has positively and negatively affected the love experience and you could talk from yourself like as mm -hmm. an, an anecdotal experience or like the big picture man okay so how have the advancements at for women mm -hmm. impacted the dating mm -hmm. experience dating match matching and all that jazz i don't know i feel like women have i don't know if i feel like i can't if you if you consider like women's role throughout history we've always had to be there Mm. So whether a man is there or not, whether, you know, you're sick, you're healthy, mm. you have to do it. You got to mm. get it done. And I think black women, by and large, have taken that um, pressure, so to speak, mm. and we've ran with it. Mm. And um, for various reasons, whatever it may be, we find ourselves, we may find ourselves having to still push, you know, beyond and, and obtain, um, whether that be degrees, businesses, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's just the drive in women, black women, mm -hmm. to to do those things. For as far as how that has impacted the dating scene, I mm -hmm. don't know. I think it's impacted, of course, positively and negatively, duh. But as far as how, um, positive-wise, I think men who are open to it can honestly see their spouse as now like a partner, like okay. not somebody that you have to take care of, but somebody that's hustling as hard as you. Mm -hmm. And like, really when y'all get together, you can really go, you know, further because what's better than, you know, somebody that you can love and grow with and build with, you know, like mm -hmm. that's exciting. So I mm -hmm. think that aspect has, you know, been a positive experience mm -hmm. um, from a negative perspective. It does come with the intimidation aspect. For men who not who may not necessarily be where they would like to be when they meet you. Mm. What, <laughs> what no, you got playing? Finish, finish what you said. Finish it. Finish it. So the <clears throat> the intimidation factor is 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 rather annoying because it's I feel like it's self imposed by men. I mean, if you have a woman who's telling you like, okay, like. You're not there yet, but mm -hmm. okay, but tell me the goal. Give, mm -hmm. Show me the roadmap. You know, what do you have laid out? How are you going to get there? If you can lay out that type <clears throat> of vision, then even a woman who is further than you may still be willing to say, okay, cool, I'm, I'm, I'll ride with you on that. Mm -hmm. I'll stand by you on that. You know, because like I was saying, if you're up, you can be down. Mm -hmm. So from a monetary perspective or a perspective of possessions, if you have it, you can lose it. Mm. So at no point, I'm speaking for myself, do I feel like, you know, because I have this, I'm better than somebody. Mm. Um, so I don't, I don't see it as a negative thing, but I think men can see it as a negative thing because they're in their head so much. Mm. Where it's like, you really need to analyze what I'm saying to you as a woman who's, you know, interested in you or talking mm. to you or, or really trying to explain to you, like, I'm okay with building, like, just... Show me the roadmap. And I think that comes from him not necessarily being confident in who he who he is and what his roadmap is. Because mm -hmm. it's one thing to want it, but it's a totally different thing to have the grind and go get it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he may he may talk a good game, but when it comes to presenting those blueprints, you're coming up short. Mm -hmm. So then I think that's where the, the oh, man, she knows she's going to think she's better than me or, yeah. you know, that type of mentality may come into play. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, you said you said a lot of good stuff. I did stuff. say a lot, but see, I told you I'm I'm talking to. No, like but that. it was quality. It was quality. Um, I'm I'm gonna go back to what I what I said about biology. Um, okay. The truth is, we haven't evolved that far. We haven't evolved that much, and I think part of what's happening. So, for instance, I was reading the other day that the demographic with the fastest growth or highest growth in suicide rate is white men. White men. White men. The face of the patriarchy or white privilege are the ones killing themselves at the highest rate. Okay. And reading further, what what's actually happening is that um, it's one thing to be born blind. That sucks. Mm-hmm. But to be born with sight and then be blinded sucks okay. a lot more. Okay. Because you know what you're missing. So... What's happening is because of demographic shifts and things like that, white men have been dethroned from their position of privilege and power to a position of like, damn, I need to figure out what my utility is. The, 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 I was making $60,000 a year as a truck driver. Nobody needs truck drivers anymore. Mm -hmm. So now I can't provide for my wife. And now she's left me because she makes more money than I do. She doesn't need me to be handy around the house. She doesn't need... The things that classically men have brought to the table Mm -hmm. are almost like less relevant now. And that's from like physical things all the way down to like sexual things. Like y'all got the rabbits and the Sabian (laughs) machines and the whole nine. And I think why that's relevant is like, like I said, men haven't evolved. We haven't evolved that much, but we're trying to dialogue with an evolving world. So as great as it sounds to be like, you know, let's grow. Mm Mm-hmm. It doesn't sound good to men. Dang, that's crazy. Because our role for millennia, since the beginning of time, and again, like, these are things that have been established over thousands of years. They're not going to change over 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. Our role has been, I'm going to build the house. You come in and decorate that motherfucker. Make it a home. Right. Make it comfortable. When I come in, I want to smell something good on the stove. Exactly, exactly. And that's still... Unfortunately, because I don't think it's a good thing, but that that's still ingrained into the psyche of a man. So the mere fact that a nigga can't build the house is emasculating. Damn. The mere fact <laughs> that I have to get the blueprint from you is emasculating. Mm. So like, and I hear a lot of women talk about like the whole Bonnie and Clyde, we go build together. It doesn't sound good to men. It's not, it's not a good... It's not a good proposition. It's, it's because, I mean, unfortunately, the, the truth is, whether you look at it biblically, biologically, or whatever the case may be, whether you believe in traditional gender roles, there are roles. Both people can't do the same job. Um, both people can't have the final say. Uh, both people can't be the 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 have the last right of refusal. Mm -hmm. So like with that being said, it was easier back when I made more money or- or Uh, But see, y'all acted up. When y'all had that type of privilege, y'all acted up, which is why we had to be like, no. White men acted up. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. See, no, now, of course, I don't want to work. You know what I mean? But I I do. But when you give to, when you give somebody the ability to feed feed you, mm. you give them the ability to starve you, mm. and y'all mm. had way too much, you know, fences behavior going on. Where hey, I did this, it is what it is, and what mm. you gonna do? You gonna leave? Mm. And so what if you do? You know, type attitude. Mm. Nah, that's that's dead. No, I, I agree with you. I think I think what happened though is like men didn't understand that there's a monetary value to what women bring to the table. Like, outside of the nice stuff, Mm -hmm. like, if you hire an interior designer, you know how much that costs. Mm -hmm. If you hire a babysitter, you know how much that costs. If you hire a a daycare educator, you know how much that costs. A fucking 
uh, house housekeeper, cook. a cook. These are expensive things, and you have somebody who does that. And I think that's where men fucked up because we didn't understand the value of that. And therefore, the only way women could think to measure up was to do it the same way we do. And I mean, the, the, when we talk about like what happened with, uh, I think it was World War II, when all the men went off, that's when women started working. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, this is all y'all been doing this whole time and like rubbing it in our face. And now we're here. But again, those are white people. And oh, a lot of times, white people. a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of shit white people did, white men did and white women complained about, we have almost adopted it as us. Uh, we had this, we had a similar experience though. Cause, cause grandpa might've had a couple kids down the street and grandma was expected to stay. And oh well, he at least he paying the bills, girl. At least he bringing home the bacon, so to speak, mm. right? So when when we gave y'all that ability to feed us and the kids, y'all acted up. But we still fed y'all. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter, and that's that's still. Hey, they were missing mm. back then, and we continue to miss today mm. for that very reason. Because to your point, you say women don't listen to men, but mm. like I said, nobody feels heard. A woman feels like I'm telling you it's okay. Like I'm mm. telling you, I know, I know as a man, you don't want to feel emasculated. Mm. I know as a man, you want to feel like a leader. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I'm woman enough to, to be, be cool where you at right now, because I can see the vision. If you could show me the vision, I can see mm. where you're going. And, you know. Can I ask you a question? Sure. So. <clears throat> That's not move. like if you're trying to be a rapper or nothing crazy, though. Like no, I mean I get, that could be an honorable an honorable career choice. I think it's a bullshit career choice. But here's my okay, question. Okay, I was just trying to be fair. Let's <laughs> see okay, go ahead. Let's say okay, we're living in a forty thousand dollar house. You're a doctor. I'm a rapper or an aspiring SoundCloud artist. You said four hundred thousand. Yeah, okay. four hundred thousand um, dollars mortgage, and you're a doctor. You make. Three hundred thousand dollars a year. You're okay. you're doing fine. All right. I make my forty thousand. Can you not be a rapper though? Okay, I, I'm an average black man. I make thirty seven thousand dollars a year. Okay. Ooh. Obviously, you're paying the majority of the mortgage. Obviously. Obviously, you're paying the majority of the bills. Mm-hmm. When a financial decision needs to be made, <laughs> who has the last say? Answer I think that. I think that's where I believe that it can be an honest dialogue. There's going to have to be some give and take on each mm-hmm. on, on each side. And I think if you approach it from that perspective, then um, everybody can. It, you got to give and take. I think a relationship mm-hmm. is give and take. And I think men, y'all, y'all sometimes want to rule with the iron, iron fist when it's like, but for why? Because I could have a valid and <clears throat> honest and. Mm-hmm. An opinion that honestly can yield a better result than what you're thinking. But sure. because you're the man, you feel like I need to have the final say. And if you say I don't have the final say, then you don't value me me as a man. Nah, but sometimes if what you're saying doesn't make sense, mm. I have the ability to be like, nah, babe, that, that. Mm. What about if we try it this way? And I know it's a lot about delivery. I can't be like, sure. bitch, nigga, you're a dumbass. I can't say all that. Yeah. But I can say, well, babe, you know, I was thinking, what, hear me out. Mm. This. What do you think about this? I feel like if you made three hundred thousand dollars a year and he made forty, you would have a lot more bass in your voice. Let me tell you okay, something. Okay, but listen, nigga. but listen, <laughs> but listen. Nigga. We're not talking about large this is jumps. What we're, like, doing. we're not talking about large jumps. Like that's a very large jump. Like but I think I'm that's saying, a very like, dramatic. Statistically jump. speaking, most black men like when we're talking about like Kevin Samuels, and that's kind of like where we're going, right? I actually looked it up. Like there's um I think it was in the Wall Street Journal. They had like a they had a, a demographic chart where you can filter it by like race and ethnicity and gender and shit like that mm-hmm. and um, figure out what percentile you're in mm-hmm. based on your salary. Okay. People who make $100,000 a year, 10% mm-hmm. of the population. That's not a lot. When you control for race, when you say black people, oh, shoot. <laughs> that's like 5% of the population. Okay. When you then say black men, it's like 3% of the population. What do you say? Then. So that's the <clears throat> NBA, the NFL. <laughs> then when you start controlling for that, you got to control for um, men who are uh, heterosexual. 
mm-hmm. who are interested in women. Mm-hmm. You have to control for men who are relatively attractive or stylish, whatever the fuck women like. Then you have attractive to control. And there we go. <laughs> and then you have to control for men who are, you know, seeking monogamy. Right. Because the entertainers, they're not seeking monogamy. Nope. They like the life. Then you have to control for a man who's at least taller than you. <sighs> yeah. It's I mean, symbology honestly, again. Like you can say I'm a short nigga, but if a nigga isn't at least taller than you, or at least your height, <laughs> at least as tall. Oh yes, is I. Anyway, I've had a lot of conversations with any woman. It's not gonna. It's not gonna. You give. don't feel like, <laughs> you like you gotta saying? pick him up and put him on your hip. Like. And then when you then control for, um, after all that, control for a man who is attracted to you. Uh huh. Right. You're talking point zero 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 one percent of the population. Right. You know, so I say all that to say it's it's tough out here for women. And it's important to know that, like, men don't think the way that y'all do. Yeah. And we don't value the things that y'all value. No. And unfortunately, we're both still superficial, just not on the, in the same way. I care a lot about how you look. Right. You care a lot about. What kind of life can you provide? Can I provide for you? Because women, what, what I what I realized, what I learned, you know, as I've matured in my pimping, <laughs> what I what I've learned is like women more so remember how you make them feel. Absolutely. Than anything else. Absolutely. Uh, whereas men, you know, it's still kind of how you make us feel, but it's more so an ego thing. But like for y'all, it's like it's less about how how what I said or how I said. Like, have you heard that Giveon uh, snippet? Um, it's a song he's about to drop called um, "Trying to Be." Trying to be all that I can be for you. When you're not with me, it's hard because it's lonely. Honesty, I told him I'm in love with you, but they're okay with being number two. Drifting us apart. Ain't did nothing wrong yet I'm tempted when you're gone Cause I don't do a lot long They want me more than ever now And I'm scared that I want them too Too But literally, like, if you listen to the lyrics, he's talking about, like, I want to be faithful, but these hoes out here and they want me. But the Lord way he sings it, you forget that's what he's saying. Like, I, I sent it to some I people. I probably hear it and be like. I sent it to some people and they were like, this is beautiful. I was like, did you listen to the lyrics? Like, no. <laughs> Go back and listen to the lyrics. Damn, that's fucked up. So, like, for, for, for women, it tends to be like. I see what you did there. How does this make me feel? Yeah. And I think that's part of the reason why we don't hear each other sometimes. Absolutely. Wow. That, I mean, hey, I have to agree with that. I 100% have to agree with that because women are, we're, we're emotional. Now, mm. I will say, I think men are more emotional than women. How so? Women just express their emotions more. Does so when you sense? say more emotional, do you mean? I think y'all just, you, it's so, everything is so. Drifting us apart I ain't did nothing wrong 